number five, the first thing I notice, right, is there's two minus signs right next to each other. Do we remember yesterday what those come together and form? That's right, Francisco, a plus sign. So what I want you to do is extend those minus signs and make one big plus sign. That way we don't get any type of confusion, whether we're keeping one of the minus signs or flipping them or changing them or whatever you guys brought up yesterday. Just make one big plus sign so that we know. Now we have negative two plus six. And for some of you, this might be nice and simple, but here's an easy way to break this down so it's easier on our brains when it comes time to compute. Every single number has a sign in front of it. If I gave you this number here, what sign is in front of that number? A plus sign, right? Even though we don't have to write it, we know there's a plus sign. And if I gave you this number, what sign is in front of that number? A negative sign, right? Every number either has a plus in front or a minus in front. So if we have negative two plus six, what we can do is take the sign and the number, and we can take this other sign and number, right? Minus two and plus six, and we can swap their places, okay? So now what we have is positive six minus two. We don't even need that plus there. And we get a much easier looking expression, six minus two, which gives us what? Four, right? Now that might be over explaining for some of you, I understand that, but this is something that is gonna help us out once we get to the more complicated stuff. You can always swap these numbers around if you include the sign that's attached to the front of it, right? Negative two plus six is the same exact thing as six minus two, but six minus two is more uh, familiar to us, right? It's just simple subtraction. Any questions about five? Okay. And then down to eight, now we don't have two minus signs next to each other, but we have a plus next to a minus. So what are those two signs gonna fuse into? A plus sign or a minus sign? What do you guys think? A plus sign? Close. Remember, the two minus signs formed a plus. But if we have two different signs, a positive and a negative, those are just gonna form a minus sign. The thing I brought up yesterday, how if I come into class super positive, but someone's being negative, well now we're all negative, right? So a plus and a minus makes a minus. Plus adding a negative number is the same as subtracting a number, right? So now we have negative two minus eight. Again, the one way we can think about this is you're spending $2, and then you spend eight more dollars for a total of $10 that you spent, so we get minus 10, right? Now, some of you may have gotten something like six or negative six, totally fine, as long as you understand how we got negative 10, right? If we already have a negative number and then we're subtracting more from it, we're getting further down the negative number line. You could always refer to this number line up here on top of the board on the left if you need help, all right? Let's go on to fractions. Um, we broke this down yesterday, but we'll go over it again. 18 over 36, we'll do 14. And remember, if we're gonna break down this fraction, we wanna ask ourselves what two numbers multiply to get each number. So we'll start with 18. Who can tell me what two numbers multiply to give me 18? Tina. Six and three. Six and three, perfect. Three times six. Now, can we split six up even further? Yeah, we can, right? Six is three times two. Three times three is nine, times two is 18. It works both ways, right? What about 36? Six and six. Six and six, so three times two times three times two. That gives us six times six. Give me a thumbs up if you see how I broke that down, because there's a lot of threes and a lot of twos. Okay, now what are we looking for? Common factors. Uh, we're let, uh, sorry, <laughs> exactly, we're looking for common factors. I see a pair of threes right here. I see another pair of threes right there. And I see a pair of twos. Now this is where we have to pay extra special attention. I see that all I have left is this two, right? So is my answer just gonna be two? No. No, it's not, right? What am I missing? The one. The one, where am I putting the one? On the top. On the top, exactly. Even though all of these factors on top canceled out, we cannot forget that this is still a fraction. So if they all cancel out, we're just left with one. 
And our answer is 1 half. And it makes sense, right? 18 is half of 36. Questions on breaking up the fractions like that. Again, that's going to be a common theme uh, when we get to our new lesson, so definitely make sure you understand what's going on there. Um, and then we go down to, let's do 18. Now, these are improper fractions. What's the difference between an improper fraction and a regular fraction? That's right. The numerator is a larger number than the denominator. And what I want us to get away from is using mixed numbers in this class. A mixed number looks something like this, 1 and 3 fourths, right? Does this look familiar to anyone? Probably elementary school, right? We are not going to use mixed numbers ever in this class. And the reason why is because once we get further and further into algebra, this technically looks like it's 1 times 3 over 4 and not one number in total. So we always want to keep our fractions improper so that we know it's one single number. 72 is what times what? 9, Nine times 8, right? Yeah. 9 is 3 times 3. 8 is what? 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. So I went a little quick there, but hopefully you see how we broke it down into its prime factors, right? 3, 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 72. What about 60? 5 times 12. 5 times 12, perfect. 5 times 12, 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3, right? The more comfortable you get, the quicker you can go. But if you need to break it down step by step, that works too. Again, we're looking for common factors. 2s, twos, 2s. Twos. Is that it? Yeah, it looks like it's it. Right? Did I do something wrong? 3 times 3 is 9 times 2. Oh, my bad. There's another three. Boom. There we go. A pair of threes. So on the bottom, we're just left with five, right? So we know our denominator is going to be five. But what's my numerator, numerator going to be? Six. six, right? How'd you get six? Three times, two. three times two. Don't just stick them together and call it 32. Remember that you're re-multiplying them together to get six over five. All right? Now, there's no corrections to be made. You got all four of those right. Hopefully you didn't use your red pen at all, which is great. But if you saw a mistake, uh, hopefully you corrected that on your own. What I want you to do for me right now is go ahead and give this worksheet to whoever's in seat A. If there is no A in your group, give it to seat B. Yes. Yes, go for it.